It is the opposing RSF that is Wagner affiliated. Now, I'll walk you through the genesis but I won't publish everything verbatim, for reasons known to me. However, I'll publish enough to give you an idea, at least. Okay, we all know Omar al-Bashir, one of the longest serving and most popular Sudanese presidents. Reportedly, when the shakeup that threatened his regime began around 2017, al-Bashir was said to have traveled to Russia to seek the Syria style partnership with Russia, in order to save his regime. Knowing that such partnerships understandable come at a price, al-Bashir quickly promised Russia that Sudan would become Russia's gateway to Africa. That's a very pregnant and far-reaching promise. And even though the timing of this could have been earlier, he was quick to make good on his promises. Reportedly, he invited a bunch of Russian miners to get involved in the Sudanese massive gold mining sector, given that Sudan is Africa's third largest gold producer. If you read about Russian involvement in Sudan in mainstream media, you'll probably hear about this gold thing a lot and in greater details, including how it all ties to the Wagner Group and its leader. But I'll tell you. What the real issue is, the real bone of contention is the proposal for a Russian naval base in Sudan. By this time, the Wagner forces, at the behest of the ousted al-Bashir, were said to already have been in the country for some years. In fact, it was said that Wagner had tried to intervene to stop the ouster of al-Bashir, but the other guys had their way and he was forced out. However, Wagner remained in the country. Keep in mind that during the Sovereignty Council government era, a series of agreements were reached between Russia and the government of Sudan, and one of them was the establishment of a Russian naval base at Port Sudan. Per the agreement, the prospective base would host a naval logistics center and repair yard, up to 300 personnel and about four naval ships, including nuclear-powered vessels. Owing to sustained pressure from the U.S., Sudan began soft-pedaling on the agreement and later abandoned it altogether. After General Fatah's takeover and arrest of civilian members of the dissolved coalition, Wagner allegedly tried to warm up to him to find common grounds, but relations quickly broke down, understandably. After this incident, Wagner reportedly pulled back into their shells in search of new relationships. They were said to have found one with RSF and its commander, General Mohamed Hamadan Digalo, who was Fatah's deputy and more open to a pro-Russian way of doing things and would guarantee the safe implementation of the agreements signed between Moscow and the al-Bashir government slash and another between Russia and Sovereignty, Coalition, Council. Especially the establishment of a naval base. So, it was game on. Read my previous post on this to see how the crises between the two factions began. So basically, it's all about agreements and strategic interests. As of today, many countries, especially in the West have started evacuating their citizens from Sudan as situation has greatly deteriorated. Yesterday, it was reported that about 300 government soldiers were seen escaping into neighboring Chad with thousands of civilians caught in the middle. A French convoy was recently hit, according to its foreign ministry. Egypt says a member of its mission in Sudan has been shot dead. Biden now says the United States has temporarily suspended operations at their embassy in Khartoum. Obviously, Sudan is at war, a full-scale war and both. Russia, US, UN and many other countries have called for calm, but it doesn't seem anyone is listening. The next few days will be very critical as this multifaceted battle of interests unfold in Sudan.